Hey guys, Stealth here. Today we're going to have a look at Modern Naval Warfare. This is a submarine simulator, and in this video I'm going to be combining the information from the interview that they recently did with the trailer from a year ago, so you can assess and decide whether this is a game for you. In this simulator, you are placed in command of a Virginia-class submarine. You can take control of all the stations yourself, if you so desire. You can outsource some of the tasks to AI, or, and this is going to be very interesting, you can combine forces with other players. You can put your friends to work at various stations aboard the submarine, as you are in overall command as the captain. I've slowed this part down for a bit so we can have a closer look at the CIC, the Combat Information Center, which is where you'll be controlling the submarine from. Again, you can either do this in single player mode, or you can do it in a multiplayer mode. You better bring some friends who know what they're doing, because otherwise you'll probably find that the AI will kill you. Now, submarine is going to have a lot of different stations. You are looking at, of course, detecting the enemy, either by the use of the periscope, radar or sonar, sonar being the most important. If you and potentially your friends are going for even more immersion, you can do it in VR, which makes this even deeper and definitely a lot more interesting as far as I'm concerned. Because otherwise you'll just be looking at a whole lot of displays. This is a simulator, this is not cold water, so you'll not be constantly looking at your submarine in, well, third person, if you will. Fortunately, the game does feature time compression, so you'll not actually be on patrol for hours and hours and hours at a time. Because either you, or potentially all your friends together, might not have the time for that. One thing that I thought was really interesting that came out from the interview was that this game is going to have real-time traffic of shipping. There is a system that naval vessels use to show their location. And that gets translated into the world of modern naval warfare. So you can see an actual ship in the location where it is in the world right now, in this simulator. That's going to be even more immersive, because that means that you might actually feel like you're in, I don't know, Strait of Gibraltar, uh, Suez Canal, name it. You can actually see the traffic, the naval traffic, that's out there at that specific time. The same can be said about the weather, and the weather gets pulled in from all sorts of different sources. Now this does make me wonder, is the weather also going to have impact on flight operations of the AI? Not sure about that yet. The last part of the segment shows you this screen. This is one of the screens you might be looking at quite a bit, because it tells you what the boat is doing and how you can control it. This is not WASD, Q and E or Q and Z for the depth. This is the screen you'll be using to control your submarine. The sonar screen is another one of those screens you'll probably spend a lot of time looking at, because this is the primary sensor of the submarine. This is the primary way of figuring out what is going on around you. This is not for the faint of heart. This is not for those of you who are looking for quick action and instant gratification, because this looks like it is really hardcore. It is a simulator, after all. Now, back in the day, I played both Dangerous Waters as well as Sub Command. Those games are from the early 2000s, I think, so about 20 years old. 
Um, back in that game, you could hand off certain stations to AI crew members. Modern Naval Warfare also has that feature. So if there are tasks that you don't like to do or don't know how to do, you can hand those off to an AI crew member and they will do it for you. The view you're about to see from the periscope looks really, really good. Here is my question. One, how much time are you actually going to be spending looking through the periscope? And two, how much time are you actually going to have to look at all the beautiful 3D models? Because it looks like the game has some outstanding graphics, but you're busy manning your station. You're busy manning the whole submarine if you're playing single player. Do you have enough time to admire the beauty? And this is pretty much the same point that I raised in a previous video that was Task Force Admiral. Do you have time to stop and smell the roses? Do you have time, or maybe in the case of a submarine, even the visuals, do you have the visual contact to actually admire all of this graphic work that went into designing the ships? I wonder. And I think it's going to be an important element of this game to draw in a wider audience, which then again might not be their objective, I'm not sure. From this segment with the drone, you might get the impression you can also control a drone or other units in the game. At the start, that will not be possible. You will only be able to control the Virginia-class submarine. They are, depending on professional interest, expanding the game into a couple of different submarines, which is the Astute-class from the British and the German 212 diesel electrics, as well as, potentially on the long term, surface combatants. But that again, that is really long term. What I really liked about this clip is the ability to set nav points, or at least that's my takeaway, for your weapons. You can, in cold waters, do this to a certain extent with your torpedoes. You can make it appear, if you will, like your torpedoes are coming from a different direction. You cannot do the same with your missiles. Modern naval warfare with, well, its nature as a simulator, does give you that opportunity. As for the damage model, this particular segment I took from the interview that the devs did with the Slytherin guys, and it shows you that this tanker is going to get hit by a torpedo. Now, that's nothing special. But note how this thing sinks. It fills up with water on the side where it took the torpedo. And as the devs explained it, this is going to be heavily reliant on what you're hitting and where you're hitting it. Because the game actually simulates the target vessel filling up with water. And then, as you can see, capsizing to that side. How a ship will sink is also dependent on whether it is a warship or not, so whether it has a lot of bulkheads and watertight compartments. But it, for me, does raise the question, how many ships did they model? How much time have they spent modeling these ships? Or are we going to see a sort of generic, oh, this is a warship type deal? And this has more, let's say, water flooding resistance than other ships.
In the interview, the developers also mentioned that in this simulator, you're going to have ASW assets, anti-submarine warfare assets working together. So you can have a helicopter dropping sonar buoys and of course other surface combatants such as a frigate or a destroyer coming after you to finish you off. Expect fierce resistance from the AI. Now for a minute, imagine your submarine operating in this area and the amount of sonar contact you must be processing. This is one of those moments when it might be more useful to hand over the sonar task to either a friend or to the AI so you can focus on navigation. Another very interesting thing is, and you can expect this with the sim, there seems to be a editor. A campaign editor, a scenario editor, call it what you will. This is what the devs had to say about that. This, my guess is that many, many scenarios are, are going to be available later and from the community too. So I'm pretty sure that we're going to see some campaigns that they are uh, management oriented. You're going to be the captain. You, you won't have to, to, to walk on stations so much. And some others are going to be sonar oriented and maybe made by sonar men which there are many in the community. So we're going to see many different uh, types of campaigns and people who are going to get uh, in the position to play in many different stations in many, yeah. many different ways, uh, M and W. Yeah. To me, this sounds a lot like a Steam Workshop integration plus editor so that you can design your own scenarios and s upload them to the workshop, as well as download other scenarios from other players and play those for yourself. Meaning that the replayability is going to be excellent. You can keep just challenging yourself with new scenarios and new ways to play the game. Like I said, either more station management or more general management entirely up to you. I suspect that this simulator is going to have a really long lifespan, which makes the next segment about VR interesting as we might all collectively have more VR sets and playing a VR game like this together or even doing it in the single player could be really interesting. Uh, VR is... Uh, the, the gameplay, the idea of the gameplay for the, for the game is uh, twofold. Uh, one is you operate the stations, the other is that uh, you operate, you, you take the part of the captain. The captain gives orders and the people on stations uh, execute these orders, so there's always somebody that is in, uh, that is in control. The idea for VR is uh, that you take the the, uh, the place of the captain. Uh, he moves around, or she, right? Uh, this uh, this age, uh, this person moves around the control room and look at the station and give the command. Look, I want that. I want this target, this uh, contact to be assigned to torpedo one, and do this uh, then that, or get us to that depth or that uh, that speed and so on and so forth. That's the idea for the VR, it's that you get in the place of the captain. And then you can have people without VR playing on their computer or AI and doing the station stuff. Will, will VR be available at release or...? Is it so when can you take control over this simulator? When can you take control over this, well, at least at the start, Virginia class sub? So when can you take the con and get control over this submarine? Well, rather the simulator. The devs expect a beta in the late first quarter of 2023 and hope they'll have a release by late second quarter 2023. So that would make it June or early July in 2023. Let's say we give them another three months as a margin of error and we should be in the third quarter when it comes to a full release of the simulator. Now based on what they have said in the interview, it is likely going to be supported for a very, very long time especially if there is professional interest, they should have a really sizable budget that they can use to keep expanding this simulator. How expansive it's going to be, time will tell. The pricing, I don't know. 
If you want to keep up to date with that, check their Steam page every once in a while and that should tell you more. To wrap up, I think this looks like a really promising, if extremely ambitious simulator. It is not going to be something that everyone will enjoy, because for some people it will be too hardcore. That's fine. It seems to be much, much more oriented towards a professional slash semi-professional market rather than casual gamers. However, if you have a crew, and I mean that in more ways than one, if you have a bunch of friends that you can play this with, then this could be absolutely phenomenal. And by the time that we have something playable, I'll try to get a group together to play this for you on the video. Do let me know down below in the comments what your thoughts are based on what you know and based on what you've seen so far. I'm looking forward to seeing your comments. And if you thought this video was interesting, please give it a thumbs up so more people can become aware of modern naval warfare. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video and I'll see you soon for more videos.